Hey everyone, this is Dylan here, and today I'm going to be going over doing a fungal culture. So this is for isolation of yeast or mold. And when it comes to acceptable specimens, it's going to be all your usual suspects here, and some of your most common specimen types would be deeper respiratory specimens, such as bronchlobashes or bronchlobashes. So when it comes to media for doing a fungal culture, it is a requirement to have one selective and one non-selective plate at a minimum. And in the lab I'm at, we actually use two of each. So we have four plates in total. And you know, some of your non-selective plates would be something like a sad plate or a PD or potato, potato dextrose, that is, as it is also called. So these plates would grow pretty much everything. It'll grow bacteria as well as uh, your fungi. And then when it comes to your selective media, you know, this will be selecting four fungi, so we'll have some antimicrobial um, additives to it. And even there's one called an inhibitory mold agar plate, which will inhibit some of your uh, fast growing molds. So you can even use that plate. Another type of um, selective plate would be like a BHI. As I said, it has like gentamicin added to it and chloramphenicol, which will kill off most of your bacteria. So now that you have your plates inoculated, the next step is going to be incubation. So for a fungal culture, they get incubated for about four weeks at 30 degrees Celsius. So 30 degrees is kind of a happy medium between uh, 25 degrees and 35 degrees. So that 25 degrees actually is kind of the best uh, growth for molds, and 35 is actually your bacterial temperature as well, and it has the best growth for yeast. So generally when it comes to doing a fungal culture, you'll strike that happy medium between the two temperatures. So we do 30 degrees. And then, you know, when it comes to the whole time of four weeks, that's what makes a fungal culture different is that it is held for a very long time. A regular bacterial culture is only held for just a few days. And even if you have something like an ortho specimen, um, you know, at our institution, we only keep those for two weeks. So that's why you, you know, really should add on the fungal culture to keep it for that you know, maximum amount of time. So when it comes to reading plates, you're going to be doing this probably a couple of times a week for the whole four week duration. And, you know, obviously you're going to be on the lookout for a yeast or mold. And some, you know, tips that you can use. So remember you have, you know, at least two different um, plates. One is going to be selective and one's going to be non-selective. So you can compare the growth on each of those different types of media. So obviously if you have growth only on your you know, potato dextrose plate and no growth on your BHI plates with your uh, antimicrobials, then, you know, you can presume that it's just bacteria growing because yeast will grow on that BHI plate with antimicrobials as well. So if you see growth on both plates, then it is indicative of yeast and it's going to have that typical appearance as well. So in this example here, you can see that, you know, there are four plates here and you can see growth only in the first two plates. So the first two plates are sab and potato dextrose, and then there's no growth on the last two plates of IMA, which is the inhibitory mold agar plate, and the BHI with gentamicin and chloramphenicol. So, you know, that clues you into the fact that this is bacteria here, and you don't need to worry about it. Uh, and if you saw growth on all four plates, then that'd be indicative of yeast, or if you saw, you know, only a little bit of slow growth on a BHI plate, then, you know, same thing, yeast. Um, so you want to do um, a wet prep or, you know, work that up appropriately. So now that you think you have fungal growth on a plate, you're going to work it up appropriately. So what that means is that if you have yeast, you're going to do that wet prep just to confirm that it is yeast if you're not 100% sure. And then once after you do that, you're going to sub it to a sad plate, for example. And the workup is dependent on the site. So if it's from a sterile site, you know, like CSF or, you know, acetic fluid, pleural fluid, etc. You're going to resolve that, obviously, and then do sensitivities on it. And um, if it's from a site such as a respiratory site, so at our institution, we would still sub it out and identify it. And the only thing you're trying to rule out is cryptococcus neoformans. So that would be the only bug that would be atypical for a respiratory site. If you got any other ID, such as Candida albicans, you know, it was our protocol just to say normal flora, you know, yeast isolated normal flora, it's not Cryptococcus neoformans. So that, that's the workup for yeast. 
on most sites. And when it comes to molds, you know, you don't need to do a wet prep or anything. You can identify it straight away and you're going to sub it to a PD plate. So a potato dextrose plate is the only plate that you can actually tell the true color of a mold. So that's very important. Obviously, if it's on the potato dextrose plate originally and you get lucky like that, then you can, you know, note down its color and use that as part of your identification. And if the growth is really good originally, you can go straight to doing a lactophenol cotton blue slide to identify the mold. But, you know, regardless, you're always going to want to sub it out to a PD plate uh, because, you know, a, a lacto off of the original plate may not be good enough. So you want to preferentially do a lactophenol cotton blue off of the sub. So one of the big issues with doing a fungal culture actually is working up molds. So molds are notorious for being common contaminants, you know, no matter how you work it up in the BSC and you know, it could be originally contaminated from condensation on the plate or whatever. So it's a very big issue. So that's why at our place we use four plates, as I said before, two selective and two non-selective. Um, so you really have to compare the growth of mold you know, on all the plates. So is it just on one plate? Is it on all plates? And that'll clue you in to if it's a contaminant or not. So obviously, obviously if you just have mold on one plate, be very hesitant to work it up, especially if it's from like a sterile site, like an ortho or, you know, a sterile body fluid, you know, be very hesitant to work that up. If it's on all four plates and it's the same mold, then you know that you're working with something uh, real here. Uh, so that's one of the most difficult things when it comes to working up molds on a fungal bench is just to know when it's a true contaminant or you know a true pathogen. So those are the main points when it comes to doing a fungal culture and just remember that when it comes to doing this culture you know it's not ordered exclusively you're going to have a bacterial culture as well maybe even something like an AFB culture as well and um, you know so most of the time you don't need to be concerned about any bacterial growth that you see on the plates um, only very seldomly do you, so let's say you have like a sterile biocytes, you know, and nothing was picked up on the bacterial culture, and then you see some scant growth after a few days, and you know it's not fungi, it still would be best practice to, you know, potentially work it up, you know, determine if it's a contaminant or not, and then work it up appropriately, you know, when it comes to a site like, you know, CSF fluid, you know, you want to do your due diligence when it comes to that. And then at our place, we also would uh, look for AFB, so if we, you know, AFB tends to have quite distinct appearance. So if you saw that, you double check to make sure it was picked up on the AFB bench uh, prior before you, you know, you say no growth here. Um, you know, that's something we did. Because the fungal plates are held for so long, you're going to potentially pick up bugs that were missed on their original culture. And, you know, just make sure it was, you know, an AFB bug was picked up on the AFB bench if you do see that. So those is, you know, some things to keep your eye out for. But most of the time, you know, you're just looking for yeast or mold. And obviously, it depends on your institution and, uh, you know, your prot protocols there. That's just what we did. So, yeah, hopefully you know more about doing the fungal culture. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.